Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, wellness webinar. Uh, we're excited to once again be here. Uh, this is like our fifth month or something in a row that we've been doing this. We've had a tremendous amount of uh, feedback and uh, it's summertime. It's just crazy to me. Every time we do this, it seems like we just did it. And then all of a sudden it's, it's warmer outside and uh, you know, flowers have been blossoming here in Utah and we're just excited that uh, we have had great presenters in the past. We're excited for another great wellness webinar today. Uh, my name is Jeff Crabb. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Zydo. Uh, this wellness webinar series has been one of the uh, best received uh, educational platforms that we've put together uh, in recent months. And we're very pleased to have uh, presenters that put a lot of time and effort uh, in finding new areas of expertise that they can educate on. And we hope that today you'll find uh, that uh, our presenter and Dr. Bob uh, will add to your knowledge and, and your understanding of human anatomy and, and really the operations of it. Uh, so without further ado, I want to talk to you a little bit about Zydo. Zydo is a health and wellness technology. We work with the hand cradle, as you'll see here to my left. The hand cradle that we utilize is a class two registered medical device. Uh, it is not cleared to cure, diagnose, or treat ailments or diseases, but rather it offers insights that, you, that allow you, the practitioner, to further educate your clients, uh, to further understand what's a, what may be happening at an energetic level. And that's really the, the, the offering that we, that we have. And a lot of our technologies um, have empowered thousands and thousands of uh, individuals to further their um, wellness goals and, and achieve a greater sense of happiness and fulfillment in life. Um, we've, since its founding, Zydo's in its 14th year of business and we've run millions and millions of scans on people all throughout the world. And on a daily basis, we hear these experiences from people, we talk to practitioners, and um, it's just incredible the amount of, uh, of good things that are happening on a daily basis globally. So it's, it's great to be a part of this community. Uh, we know that you may feel oftentimes remote or removed from that, but uh, there's great opportunity um, at, at, at utilizing this, with utilizing this technology. Part of what we do here at Zydo is we strive really hard to build the community. This community and this educational uh, component, we uh, do a lot of out, out in the world, across the world events. And we're excited, if you haven't heard already, we have an upcoming global conference. It's one of the biggest events that we've ever hosted, uh, and it's incredibly exciting. It's going to be happening October 19th and 20th in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's a great opportunity to come together with like-minded practitioners. We have great speakers put together for this event. It'll be an opportunity to not only learn more, but understand really what uh, industry trends we're seeing here at Zydo, but we're bringing in practitioners that are um, very qualified to speak to the themes and topics that they've been assigned. For more information, I just encourage you to go to zydo.com. You'll see the link here on the page for, for forward slash conference hyphen 2018. There you'll find all the details of speakers. We have some of the vendors that we're going to be having there. It's just going to be a great opportunity um, to be together, and we hope that everyone takes advantage of it. It's not every, every year that we've done this, and we're excited to bring it back once again. Once again. Dr. Bob DeMaria is uh, Director of Drugless Doctors Ohio and Florida since 1978. Uh, he has written the Drugless Guide book series. He uses uh, innovative technologies such as digital tr uh, traditional and video fluoroscopy, thermography, spirometer, acoustic cardiogram, biofeedback, and saliva and blood serum evaluations. So your pra it sounds like your practice is incredibly uh, robust in the, in the services that you offer. Uh, do you kind of expound on that. How did, tell us a little bit about who you are, how you came into this industry, uh, what interests you about it, and what drives you to be as uh, robust as you are in your practice. Well, I've been practicing since 1978. I have a Doctor of Natural Health degree and a chiropractic degree. I've been really fortunate because my, my son and my daughter-in-law practice with me also. And I have a son that does our social media, so we have an outreach around the world. You know, my number one goal is just to help people get healthy without medication. And it was just by one of those natural things. I have a Florida license. I have a practice in Naples. 
and I was at a Florida seminar years ago, and there was a gentleman there that had a cradle. He said, hey, you want to try this? And I thought, no. But my wife did. So now we have two software packages, and it's what's really as nice is all the different modalities that I use validate each other. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's really... Uh, I mean, exactly what we offer. I mean, it's really providing you the insights and empowering you to further uh, discover um, what opportunities may exist out there for your, your clients. So that's awesome. So today, um, Dr. Bob will be presenting on the strategies for patient wellness. Um, you'll see his contact information there on Facebook, Twitter, his website, druglessdoctor.com. We'd encourage you to reach out, connect with him. Um, we certainly appreciate, do, uh, Dr. Bob, your willingness to participate with us today. Um, you're going to be sharing a lot with us about men's health. Obviously, this month, June, is, is a big push for uh, men's health, and we hope that today, um, whether you're male or female, or that, that really the concepts that Dr. Bob will share really help uh, further educate us in understanding what, what goes on in, in human, a, human anatomy, and so we're excited for that. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Bob. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so the very first would I like to start with, and so, so, and so many of you use this idol technology, uh, put your mask on first before helping others. So I think what's so important is just make sure you follow the natural principles. You want to be healthy. You want to be a great example to all of your, all of your clients and all of the people that are, are just a part of your life. So... One of the first areas I'd like you just to have just some insight on is to know your own numbers. And I'm going to go over all those numbers because the numbers about the base of your health will give me, the practitioner, or as you practitioners, know that your patients and your clients um, would really benefit from that. So first number we want to talk about is the HA1C. We'll talk about what your waistline is, blood pressure cholesterol, your BMI. This is really important here, especially for men, estrogen, belly fat, the prostate gland, how much water do you drink, and how significant your spine is. So the HA1C um, is the amount of glucose that's on a red blood cell. The difference between an HA1C and fasting blood sugar is a fasting blood sugar can fluctuate within a 24-hour time period. And HA1C will tell you exactly how much blood sugar is really in a person's body. For example, the high-end range is usually about 5.7. If somebody comes into our practice and they have an HA1C, you know, a 5.8 or 5.9, and even to the 6 range, we definitely sit back and we evaluate their lifestyle. You know, uh, my father-in-law had a saying, just another day to cheat. So you don't want to cheat when it comes to sugar. Um, I'm going to be 64 years old, and what's really interesting, when I turned 50, they were going to raise my insurance, and they told me I had to pass my BMI, which I did. When I turned 55 is when I learned about my HA1C. So it would behoove all of you listening to me right now, whether you're a practitioner using the Zyto technology or a person just listening a long way. You want your blood sugar HA1C to be within normal and do everything you can for that to occur. So it's the amount of red blood cell or amount of glucose in a red blood cell the last 120 days. Very significant. Okay, so 20% of our, pre our calories every day come from um, sugar. And I don't eat, I don't even remember the last time I would have had one of these type of, of pastries. You don't want to start your day with a pastry. You're better off to start your day utilizing a vegetable, which I will show you something that I call a swap bag, which is start with a protein. So your waistline is very significant. And I think a lot of people don't realize how their waist impacts their overall health. Ladies, you really don't want to have your waistline being greater than 35 inches. And men, you don't want your waistline to be greater than 40. So I think what is so significant is that when you have this enlarged visceral fat, it compresses these organs. And what I'll show you here momentarily when we get to the heart, if you have a lot of extra tissue here, and I know one of, because you're on the call today, 
that we're going to be sending everybody a PDF on sleep apnea, which we'll talk about more at the end of the program. But being overweight pushes your lungs up, and it has a lot to do with snoring. And so when you have this large adipose tissue right in here, especially for you men, it'll create estrogen, which is going to cause a prostate issue. And ladies, it'll also cause uh, potential to have breast issue, health issues. That's one of the reasons that we also do breast thermography in our practice. So I'm going to switch gears now. And we're going to talk a little bit about the heart. And I'm really excited to share this with you because what I'm holding in my hand right now is a liver that's normal, and this is a fatty liver. So I'm going to make a lot of very significant statements. And one of the things I've learned along the way is that fruit can cause a fatty liver. We're seeing an epidemic in our practice today of individuals who have fatty livers. And this is so significant. I believe that when the Wall Street Journal starts writing articles about fatty livers, you know there's a problem going on. And I can only tell you this, fruit will cause a fatty liver. And you might say, well, Dr. Bob, does that mean I should not eat fruit? What I'm going to share with you is, and I can send this over to the Zyo, the Zyto group, there was an article from the American Heart Association from 2011 that just talked about if you have high triglycerides, you might want to back off on fruit. We only encourage our patients to eat a half an apple every day. So what happens in your body is blood flows up through your liver. It flows up through the liver to your heart. And if you look really close right here, this is a part of the whole vena cava system. So blood flows up through veins and it goes up through your liver to your heart. So you can see on the screen there that your liver is like the oil filter in your body. But I want you to know right now, if your liver is compromised, it can cause an array of problems. And part of those challenges happens to be heart distress. So, you know, you can see right here we have the inferior vena cava. Blood came from the liver before it went to your heart. So you may consider finding yourself a uh, chiropractor or someone that could do digital radiographs. We do our standing up in the office. You may consider even coming to see us over here in Cleveland or in Naples, Florida. You want to find out if you have an enlarged liver. I'm going to make a, a point right now. Livers can be physiologically enlarged, but pathologically normal. You say, okay, what did you just say? Your liver enzymes can be normal, but your liver will enlarge depending on what you're putting in and on your body. So your liver can impact heart function. Let's talk about blood pressure. This is another number you want to know. Blood pressure should be 120 over 80. You know, the medical model tells you it should be lower than that, and they'll tell you it should be lower than that because they want to sell more medication. A little side um, silver bullet for you. I have learned that probably one of the number one causes for blood pressure challenges, besides adrenal stress, is not enough magnesium. Magnesium, we have different types of magnesium that we use. Magnesium can help you as a practitioner, you as a layperson, manage your blood pressure. If you're not pooping every day, you need magnesium. If you're a woman over 50 years old and you have heart palpitations, you need magnesium. Probably one of the best sources of magnesium is kale. I, I think that kale is like one of the perfect foods besides that. Avocados and red quinoa, if you do those three foods, you're in the right direction. So the heart beats a lot, 100,000 times a day. That's a lot, by the way. You want your pulse to be less than 72 which is the normal, mine's around uh, 54 or so. So every pound of weight that you have that extra, it adds an extra 200 miles of blood pressure, or 200 miles of blood vessels. So that means your heart has to beat harder. So this heart has to beat, and it pushes that blood out. Now, there's a lot of heavy tissue down there. It has to work harder, and that could be one of the reasons that some of you have heart distress, congestive heart failure, and other heart challenges. So magnesium. If you have constipation, leg cramps, heart palpitations, think of a magnesium need. Anything green is magnesium. Systolic blood pressure is the amount of pressure your heart has to push to go to all the blood vessels in your body. And then the pressure comes back. This is the diastolic pressure. 
when the di if your if your systolic pressure is high, you're going to stroke out. But if your diastolic pressure is high, this is the amount of blood that's going to come rushing back into this part of the heart called the right atrium. You can have congestive heart issues and a heart issue if that blood pressure comes back too much. And I read a book many, many years ago um, from Dr. Laporte. It was really a wonderful book. And in his book, he was just talking about potassium helps lower the diastolic blood pressure. We use a lot of minerals in our office, okay? We use a lot of minerals to help support optimal function. Another tool that we use is an acoustic cardiogram. So I know there's so many people that are listening to me right now that are taking meds, taking blood thinners because uh, they have heart palpitations. Alignment in the upper back, B vitamins, and magnesium helps that. So we're going to switch gears one more time now. We're going to talk about estrogen. This is significant for both men and women. Men, if you have a larger abdomen, this makes estrogen. When you have too much estrogen in your body, men, it's going to impact this gland in your body called the prostate gland. You don't want an enlarged prostate gland. Side note, I take 12 milligrams of iodine every day for my prostate gland. We, I mentioned that we use thermography in our practice. And thermography is for breast health, but you can use it for a variety of tools. But what we have found is how important iodine is for women's health. Breast cyst, cyst on ovaries, can be directly related from our experience to not enough iodine. The best food to eat when it comes to managing your estrogen level is broccoli. Broccoli will help manage estrogen. I would not take testosterone if you were a man because oftentimes testosterone can be converted to estrogen and you do not want that. But if I have a lady that comes in, for example, and their testosterone is high, statistically, they probably have breast and or, not breast, they have ovarian cysts. If I have a man, and I was on stage with John Gray many years ago, and he wrote the book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Mr. Gray said that most men 55 years and older today have more estrogen in their body than their mates. Men, you want to minimize estrogen. I have kind of a trick question here. Is it healthier to go golfing in the morning with dew on the ground and walk around the course or on a hot, sunny Sunday afternoon and ride in the cart? The answer is a hot, sunny Sunday afternoon riding on the cart because when you're walking on grass, I mean, there is so much that people just don't understand. They're spraying these fairways with herbicides and pesticides, and I have had many a man have estrogen problems in their prostate. And this makes the same for women also. So we have an epidemic of men today with low testosterone, low libido, and it's because they have more estrogen in their body than they do testosterone. They become very passive, no energy, no libido. You want to drink water from a pure source. You don't want to drink tap water. No soy. I don't think anybody should eat soy. A better alternative to soy, red quinoa and kale. So let's go back to the heart for just a minute. If you have heart palpitations, okay, it could be a body signal that you need B vitamins. I mentioned earlier we have a tool in our practice called an acoustic cardiogram. When your heart closes, when the valves close, the valves make a lub-dub noise. Well, there are muscles attached to the tendons that close the valves. And if you don't have enough B vitamins, those valves are not going to close really sharp and quick. And you're going to have a little spread of that, that heart love dub. You probably need B vitamins. We have noticed that mitral valve regurgitation is actually a B vitamin need. And we have seen those reverse without major surgeries. Okay, so a body signal of a B vitamin need. Do you cry easy? Do you have sore muscles after exercise? Do mosquitoes like you? Have you ever been, and I know there's people waving their hands, they just love me, Dr. Bob. Well, if you're walking in the woods and you're hearing flap, flap from your neighbor, look in their purse or their bag to see if they have a candy bar or something sweet. 
because sugar depletes the body of B vitamins. If you have digestive distress, see B vitamins and hydrochloric acid make digestive enzymes. So the chloride that comes from your minerals, that's why we encourage minerals. If you eat sugar, you're going to probably have a B vitamin need. If you have stress, can I get a wave of hands right now? Everybody has some type of stress. If you cry easy and you have stress, mosquitoes like you and your muscles are sore, your body is passionately wanting B vitamins. And if you take the pill, the uh, uh, um, birth control pill, you probably need B6. If you're a female over 40, you probably don't have enough digestive enzymes. As a side note, I have noticed that citrus can cause fibromyalgia. Most women over 40 need a digestive enzyme. So I want to talk about cholesterol in your heart right now, okay? So what I have noticed with cholesterol, cholesterol will elevate. So I want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil out right now, and I want you to write cholesterol, C-H-O-L, and put an arrow up. Below cholesterol, I want you to write T-R-I-G, triglycerides. If your cholesterol is elevated and your triglycerides are normal, chances are your elevated cholesterol is because of stress. Now, on the other hand, we want you to do cholesterol, C-H-O-L, up, and triglycerides, T-R-I-G, up. If your cholesterol is up and your triglycerides are up, it's because you're eating too much sugar. And we have created protocols to help lower cholesterol naturally. It was just released today. I think sometimes they are so confused about cholesterol. And I write about this in my books. And I encourage you to get my books, especially Dr. Bob's a Men's Health, The Basics, or Dr. Bob's Drugless Guide to Balancing Female Hormones, because I have charts in there about how cholesterol becomes pregnenolone, which becomes progesterone, and progesterone becomes cortisone. If your cholesterol is up and you're under stress and your triglycerides are normal, you could take statins till the cows come home, but your problem is really stress. So when you have high cholesterol, you may have low thyroid gland. You might be eating too much sugar. You know, it's kind of silly. You know, I've been practicing since 1978. And back in the days when they had everybody thoroughly convinced they needed to eat margarine and they needed to eat, eat egg beaters. I have a rule. God made or man tampered, you always go with God made. No matter what they tell you. They made a mistake on trans fat. They make a lot. And I'm not here to browbeat the medical model. I need you to use some common sense. God made, man tampered, always go with God made. Except for honey. If you eat too much of honey, eat too much of anything sweet, you're going to have some problems with your left neck and mid-back. Just thought I'd throw that out to you. I encourage a half apple a day, red preferred, beet fiber, and a medium carrot. Small carrots, medium's probably better because they put a lot of chlorine in these little babies today. You can lower your cholesterol up to 40% just by following that formula. Isn't this kind of fun, all this information that we can learn? So, so Dr. Bob, a quick question here. Like, so when you see a patient for the first time, what's kind of the protocol that you go through? Is, there, is, is this like, do you have a standard onboarding process that you take everyone through? Or what is that, what is that process? But everybody has different goals. We always ask them their goals because some people don't want they know they need to make lifestyle changes, but they don't necessarily want to. But the people that we attract, they've heard about us, and they want to be as healthy as they can without medication. So okay. we'll sit down, we'll do a consultation, find out what their health goals are. We have a regime that we do that would usually include an OptiChem panel. We would use the Zytoscan with a food stressor. Uh, I have a weight loss detox scan that we use regularly. We might do phase contrast, acoustic cardiogram. So when people come to visit us, especially from around the world, we're usually able to do that in about three or four days. And we okay. just come up with a plan of wellness. When somebody comes into the office and they're local, you know, within a two-hour drive, we usually do stuff about once a month. Okay, so then once you get them on that plan, plan of wellness, you, you set up the protocol for them and it's an occasional consultation at that point. Follow right, up. Either on the phone or face-to-face. Okay, cool. That's great. Very helpful. This is a real important slide. So cholesterol, as you can see, can become pregnenolone. Pregnenolone will become progesterone. And then you can see I have cortisone there. Okay, so the cortisol, 
if you're underneath a lot of stress, your body will make more cholesterol to make cortisone. That is really important. Now, I have progesterone here that I keep on putting the mouse around. So if you're using up all of your cortisol, that means your body's cannibalizing progesterone. Little side bullet here. That women get MS and women have miscarriages when they don't have enough progesterone. So a placenta makes progesterone. Once a woman starts having their placenta, they usually can go full term. But what we have learned, and this is why we started doing thermography, we have like this whole program that we do that we are able to drill down to find out what's going on. If a woman does not have enough progesterone, you have excessive estrogen. Lack of progesterone also is a marker for potential cancer issues. Your ovaries make progesterone. Not enough iodine results, and you're having cysts making testosterone and not enough progesterone. Okay, so that is a real important fact. If you're underneath a lot of stress and you are using all this up, you're going to have low testosterone, men. So we're seeing an epidemic of low testosterone today because of sugar and stress. Real important chart. Go back and listen to this and watch this again. So when I turned 50 years old, if I didn't pass my BMI, which is my body mass index, which you want it to be between 25 and 30, they were going to charge me a lot of extra money. I saved 20% per month on my health insurance because I passed my BMI and I passed my HA1C. If you've not heard of your HA1C, you can have it done. If you want, we could make a requisition available to you. You want to check out your BMI. A lot of people argue with it, but see, it's, it's a company, it's an industry standard, regardless of what you may or may not believe. If this is what the industry is using, even with cholesterol, you know, you got to go with the flow. You can go to uh, YouTube and just type in my name, Dr. Bob D. Maria, how to lose weight. You know, losing weight, um, this is probably the best strategy. You don't want to start your day ever with sugar, ever, because that's going to cause your insulin to go up and down. There's so many different weight loss, and I know some of you probably sell weight loss products. It's pretty, it's pretty actually pretty simple. You want to exercise on a regular basis. That is your secret weapon. I mostly eat vegetables and protein. I don't eat sugar because, you know, a flat mile is 100 calories. When I ride my bike, about a half hour is 180 calories. I rode my bike this morning uh, six miles. I just focus on vegetables and protein. I am not a vegetarian. I do eat organic animal tissue. I don't eat fish. So you have to experiment with your physiology type, you know. It's really kind of funny when you see this guy that's tall and thin, he kind of eats whatever you want. You know, God bless the guy. But for all of those of you that look at something and you gain a pound, my heart is with you. I'm in your ballpark, you know. I'd love to eat anything that I wanted, but if I did, I would just gain weight. So I really work very hard to discipline what I'm eating. I eat a lot of green vegetables, and I eat a lot of protein. I stir fry with either rice oil, olive oil, some coconut oil, but my favorite happens to be rice oil or olive oil. And, you know, everybody says, you know, what do you use for recipes, Dr. Bob? Right now in our practice, we're having a Facebook Live go on right now. You can go to our Facebook page later on and go to the Drugless Doctor Facebook page. So it's The Drugless Doctors. And we have a half-hour program right now on healthy summer recipes that I know that you will enjoy. So there's no shortcut. You have to eat less, burn more. And what's happening is, is that once you hit 40 years old, it's a little bit more challenging because you don't have as much lean muscle that you did when you were a kid. You know what I'm saying? So you want to work on building your lean muscle tissue. We have a few formulas that we do for that. And when I, if we were to go back to that chart, when your cortisol is elevated, you're going to be cannibalizing muscle, and you don't want to do that. You want to eliminate as much stress that you possibly can. And if you need to use me for an excuse to, if somebody asks you to do something, this is what you do. If someone says, hey, Bob, can you make me like six dozen cookies for a graduation party this Sunday? I'm sure there's somebody out there that was asked to do that. This is what I want you to say. I can't say yes. And they're going to go, what does that mean? I can't say yes. In other words, you're politely saying no. Just get rid of some of this extra stress in your life. You know, you want to be 
helpful, but some of you do too much for people. And I'm not telling you not to be kind, just be wise, okay? So if you eat too many almonds, that was a part of my problem. I love nuts. And I, I focus on this. There's a lot of calories in almonds, a lot of calories in nuts, period. Um, salsa was one of my foods that helped me get through. And I'm not telling you to eat salsa exclusively. There's not a lot of calories in it. You can use salsa as your salad dressing. You know, hummus only has like 37 calories for like a tablespoon or something. Um, watch your mayonnaise. That was another issue I had a long time ago. Mayonnaise, a tablespoon has 120 calories. Olive oil has a lot also. So you don't want to be doing any sugar in the morning. I make this bag myself every day. It's called a swap bag. Start with the protein. I have in my swap bag, I have a stalk of celery, six small tomatoes, some cauliflower, red, yellow, orange bell pepper, medium carrot, half a red apple, and I just put it together in a bag, and that's what I eat for my mindless eating. You know, when you're sitting there eating some chips or M&Ms or whatever your food of choice is, I'm just trying to give you some viable options. So can you explain the difference, like what your opinion is between the benefit, why you recommend red over, or the green apple, over, the difference between red and green apples? I mentioned here that I have a, a doctor of natural health degree. So in my studies, I read a book called The Answer to Cancer. It's a very good book, by the way, by Dr. Sharma. And he was just talking about like stagnation and digestion, like dairy can stagnate digestion. Well, green apples can stagnate digestion. So I'd rather have you eat, like I eat Honeycrisp. You can eat Gala Fuji Honeycrisp. You can eat Delicious. I think they're a little tart. Those are the apples of choice. I'm going to throw out one little other bullet point here right now. And I talk about this in the cataract chapter in this book. Dr. Bob's Guide to Prevent Surgery um, is you, you could have a calcium phosphorus imbalance, and that's if you're consuming too much alkaline water. You don't want to be doing any alkaline water. You want to be doing purified water. We talked about that in the CADVAC chapter in this book, Dr. Bob's Guide to Prevent Surgery. Okay, like Oreos. You, you know, the food stressor that's I know in the Zyto group. It is amazing. I had a lady came in. True story. We did the food stressor and the top of the food stressor was wheat, dairy, and Milo. So she said, well, Dr. Bob, I know where the wheat and dairy came from. They came from my chocolate, chocolate Oreos. I couldn't believe she did that. She's one of my patients. So she came back the following week and she said, I know where the Milo came from. And I said, where did it come from? She said, what I failed to tell you is I was dipping my chocolate, chocolate Oreos in chocolate, which the main ingredient was Milo. You want to drink water from a pure source. Don't use plastic, of course. I use stainless steel. Glass is probably better, but um, I've broken too many glass bottles, so I have a wonderful stainless steel container that I use right now. So let's talk about some other issues when it comes to weight loss. High fructose corn syrup will reduce leptin. Leptin tells you that you're full. Ghrelin tells you that you're hungry. So look at high fructose corn syrup. We have an obesity issue in America today because they have everybody believing that it's not sugar. You know, they have all these fake chemicals. If you just look at this label right here between soy and caramel, you know, caramel comes from barley. You could have chronic allergies from drinking soda. That's caramel colored. Cola, you know, cola, the brown, comes from caramel. So just avoid high fructose corn syrup like the plague. Become label salaries, uh, label savvy. So reduce the size of your plate. This is what I eat this right here. I eat vegetables. I don't eat pineapple. I don't do bananas. I don't do blueberries even. Spinach has just as many wonderful antioxidants, but the best antioxidant is the apple. I got to tell you something. Okay, so right here you can see steamed rice. I don't eat a lot of rice, but I have to bring this up. Actually, so I have people that have a lot of arsenic, I ask them how much rice that you eat. I'd rather, fourth time, quinoa is what you want to go, quinoa, if you're going to have anything that some comes close to a grain. And I don't only eat quinoa maybe once every two or three weeks. So this steamed rice has 150 calories. So I was someplace and I thought I was being healthy, then I ate this fried rice. I came back and 
I was in California at the time, and I sat down. My wife ordered steamed rice and broccoli and beef. I wanted to eat the fried rice, and I sat down, and I looked at the calories. I thought, oh, my gosh, there's 750 calories in that. So needless to say, I rarely eat fried rice anymore. And they did some studies on these little Hershey's. I have nothing against Hershey's. I, I love everybody. But if you have two of those per day, five days a week in one year, you can gain seven pounds. So, you know, if you go to a new job and they have a little bowl of candy out there and you're gaining weight after the year, it's those one or two little pieces of candy that you're consuming, okay? There's something else called the halo effect. It's just interesting how they have measured all this for us, okay? So people, when they leave Subway, they think they, they ate 27% less calories. Can you imagine that? And the people at McDonald's think that they eat, they, they think that the amount of calories that they consumed were 27% less than or 18% less than. So when you go to Subway and you're eating something, just be aware of the salad dressing. The salad dressing on all these foods are going to definitely create an issue. That's what they call the halo effect of these foods. And by the way, I don't eat really at any franchise restaurant. A lot of veggies, minimal grains. I have so many people that come into my office that gluten's the issue. Gluten's the issue because it interrupts the absorption of minerals. It can cause erratic heart function. Peanut butter and gluten and dairy, you consume those or you have patients that consume those. Or if you're a patient right now, your sinus problem will not go away consuming those foods. Eat lean meat, preferably organic. Um, I would not eat pork. And people out there who love sushi and they grind their teeth at night or they wake up at 1 o'clock in the morning, the epidemic that we're seeing right now, it's parasites. If I have somebody that comes into my office and they have a chronic health problem and if they eat sushi, if they've been to a third world, old country, if they wake up at 1 o'clock in the morning, and if they have a cat, they probably have parasites. And I have people come in and I'll say, hey, you grind your teeth at night? They'll say, no, my dentist made a mouth guard for me. It's like, okay. So that is just not what we want. Here we go. We're going to continue on. Exercise. Every day you want to exercise. I love to be outside. You want to run, jog, that's the best way to lose weight. Ride a bicycle, rollerblade. You want to do whatever you love to do. Your spine has everything to do with optimal health and energy and oxygen. We have a tool in our office called a spirometer that we could actually tell you how old your lungs are. You now, we've had individuals that come in the office that are 40 years old, but they have lungs of someone who is 60 or 70 years old. And see, your lungs are located right here. And if your posture is going forward, it'll compress your lungs. And um, you don't want that. Gravity never takes a vacation. It's constantly pushing down on top of you. Every inch that your head goes forward, it increases the weight of your head 10 to 12 pounds. You want to work on improving your oxygenation. You want to get a large ball and you want to bend lay backwards on that ball. That will help you with your oxygenation. We have a YouTube video. You can go on YouTube and just type in the word reversing techno neck. I was on Fox, our local Fox News program. We talked about reversing that techno neck. You know, we talked about that years before um, it was popular to talk about that. But I'm sure a lot of you have this type of a posture. This is so important when it comes to oxygenation in your body. So I want you to see this. The average head weighs about 12 pounds. For every inch that your head goes forward, it increases the weight of your head 10 to 12 pounds. I lay backwards on a very large ball every day. Your posture is important. You want your ear to be above your shoulder, and you want your shoulder to be right above your hip and your pelvis. You don't want to be shifting left or right. You want to be centered. This ball is really significant. Laying backwards on the ball, sometimes you can get some weights and put them right there. That helps improve your posture. And uh, this happens to be a skull inside of a bowling ball. It's a plastic skull, by the way. 
your average head weighs about 10 or 12 pounds for every inch that your head goes forward. It increases the weight of your head 10 or 12 pounds. So really work hard on your posture. I want you to think of your nervous system as the main circuit breaker in your whole body. As your spine is, is how your nervous system is. This is a very significant chart, and I, I know this is going to help somebody who has chronic health problems, but I learned along the way back in the 1980s, pay attention to this right now, your pancreas embryologically starts from right here, but it shifts to the front of your body right here. Your pancreas gets its electrical energy from up here, and I know that some of you could have left neck and mid-back pain, which probably some of you watching me right now that had bananas or strawberry shortcake, which is popular this time of year, you could have left neck and mid back pain because the pancreas were full. We don't promote bananas. We don't promote yogurt. Watermelon will cause pain in the mid back. You might say, Dr. Bob, you're not any fun. You don't understand. I have patients that have suffered that have taken pain meds for years and they never think about that banana and yogurt for breakfast or that that sugar-coated cereal is a part of their problem. I've had people get divorced because of pain, and it's just intense. Okay, so cholesterol medication can cause, cause low libido in men. Cholesterol look, uh, medications can cause pain in the body. We know that blood pressure can help with magnesium. We know that stress burns B vitamins and minerals. If somebody comes into my practice, if they have a cold sore and on their mouth right now, it's usually a um, mineral need. Okay, low testosterone is caused by stress also, and adrenal exhaustion is caused by stress also. So let me kind of tie all this together for you. 45% of men today don't even have a private health care provider which, believe it or not, it's not a bad idea, especially if they want to do all kinds of tests to you. But you really want to be checked by either a skilled naturopath, a skilled chiropractor, or a medical physician that does not immediately want to go and give you medications, okay? I think that's just really significant for your overall health. One of the tools that we're going to give to you today is that I'm going to give everybody, via the Zyto organization, I'm going to send a PDF on sleep apnea. When we do any kind of TV program, we always notice that we get the most response with sleep apnea. I know later on today or tomorrow we'll send out an opportunity that we have that book in separate PDF form. You can go to our website. Now be patient with us because we are updating our website. I'm not exactly sure when the exact transition is going to occur. But I did write Dr. Bob's Men's Health, the basics would be a great Father's Day present for anybody in your life. And I think that is it. Do you guys have any questions? We do. Thank you so much, first of all, for the presentation, Dr. Bob. Very insightful. There's a lot of information and things that I learned. I'm sitting here now trying to, like, sit up in my chair all proper, make sure I'm getting proper flow of oxygen into my into my lungs here. But uh, I do have a couple questions that we've received throughout the, the presentation today. The, the, a, a few people actually asked um, regarding uh, what's the best way that you, you've seen or experienced to get rid of uh, parasites. Well, parasites don't like sulfur. So any sulfur product would be helpful. See, I'm more into food. Now, yes, we, we definitely make protocol recommendations. But eggs excuse me, eggs, onion, garlic, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower. Just do a search in your favorite engine for sulfur-based foods. I have broccoli, cabbage, or cauliflower every day of my life. I have an egg every day. I eat sulfur-based foods. Okay. That's easy enough. That's an easy enough uh, adjustment to make. Um, the other question that we've had a, a few people ask about is how you've uh, found successful integrating the Zyto technology into your practice like when so, and I and I alluded to this a little bit earlier about uh, you know the protocol that when you have someone walk in do you have every person that walks in run a Zyto scan along with some of the other uh, technologies that you have available or what does that look like the Zyto scan the food stressor or the Zyto scan that we use in our practice is a part of our nutritional care programs so we just tell them that we have this special tool 
Um, I say it's like a galvanic skin response. You know how they do EEGs to people and EKGs and EMGs? We're doing an electronic assessment to your body. And it helps. And you can use this term. It gives you another set of eyes. Sometimes as a healthcare provider, we get on this, this wheel. And I think what the Zyto does is it, allow, it does a reset. And sometimes if I have somebody that's just not responding, the food stressor is amazing. And, you know, this is what I learned with the food stressor, okay? If you do a food stressor to somebody and they have five or six of the food items on the food stressor that are negative foods, it's not the food. It's their gut. You got to fix their gut because they probably have, quote, unquote, a leaky gut. And when it comes to any other challenge, you know, we do blood pressure sitting and standing in our practice. It's a way to check for adrenal health. So we actually have created a wellness program. You know, we have a six-step program. We have where they would start off with a consultation, diet sheet, health assessment, and toxicity questionnaire. Then the next time we'll do a blood test called an OptiChem profile, which includes a CBC, a thyroid panel, a lipid panel, uh, a comprehensive metabolic panel, and a urine analysis. And then the next time they'll come in, and we'll do uh, a weight loss detox Zyto, whatever the Zyto is of your choice. And then we may do the acoustic cardiogram the next, and then we'll do the food stressor. So we're, we have six tools that we would use, and we also have created an a la carte. A lot of it just depends on you as the healthcare provider, you know? If it's going to be a part of your routine, you can say, I have this very advanced technology. It's going to give us another set of eyes to get an idea of how your body's working electronically. We're like taking a look inside of your body without opening you up. And most people are quite responsive to that. And it works for us. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Uh, and, and like you said, really, these technologies that even you utilize, you just customize it to whatever your process is and what you're looking for and, and ultimately what the needs of the patient are. You know, most um, of our patients will do at least at least so we have had people that have been doing this for 40 years. I have people that have been doing this for 40, not the Zyto technology, of course. You want to attract a layer of people that want what you have. I, I'm not, I don't have time to sell what we do to people. Either you're in the boat or you're not. You know, I don't strong arm anybody. Either you do it or you don't. It's yep. okay. Yep. Absolutely. I think that's, I yeah, think that's a great. I really interrupted you. Oh, no, no, no. That's awesome. No, I think it's a great mentality to have. It's really uh, making sure that you have the right clientele that you're attracting, right? Thank you for that. Um, I was just going to ask you, uh, at Zyto, we teach a lot about how an individual's wellness, even their health, can be deeply affected by emotion. So you, you know, during your presentation, you talked about stress, for example, but there's also sadness or anger, some of these other emotions that can deeply impact an individual's wellness. Do you have experience of dealing with that? And if so, oh, yes. what have you seen be successful? Every organ has an association with an emotion. So the liver is anger. And the gallbladder is bitterness. And kidneys and spleen uh, have sorrow and fear. And the heart is love. And so if I have somebody that came in that has an enlarged liver, and somebody in their life just either passed away or a pet passed away or they lost a job, they're going to probably naturally have some anger. So, yes, there is a correlation between emotion and function. This traditional Chinese medicine, you could do a search on that. Just do a search on organ and emotion correlation, and you will definitely see that. You know, I know my next book is going to be on emotional health and behavior health, and I know that. If people have a deficiency in B vitamins, they're going to have raw nerves. They're going to have a lot of challenges. I know also blood sugar can cause people to go high and low. And um, parasites are also a problem, too. The reason with parasites, I keep on alluding to that, is that parasites, um, they eat minerals, and then they defecate in you, and it really paralyzes your nervous system. Crazy, isn't it? It's Yeah, it's like we need to get rid of those things like immediately, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the root cause is just so critical. Uh, I have someone could do a CBC, a Charlie Bravo, Charlie, a CBC. Look at your eosinophil count, EOS. And if it's three or four, you may, in fact, have parasites. 
if your basal fills are greater than zero, you may have them. You know, we also do stool cultures. You know, there's so much you could do, but you want to be wise because you spend a lot of money and learn nothing. So you always start simple and you just keep on graduating. Yeah, that's great advice. Great advice. Um, well, I think that this has just been a phenomenal educational event. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bob, for being My here pleasure. with us, sharing your, your expertise with us. Dr. Bob has alluded during this presentation that he is graciously, and I sincerely, we're so grateful for this, he's going to be sharing a chapter of one of his books. We will be sending that out for all registrations uh, that, at that attended this event. Uh, free, and that's just by the goodwill of uh, Dr. Bob. We're super grateful for that. That will be attached as a PDF, uh, a part of that email blast. We really appreciate everyone being in attendance today. We hope that it's been a valuable uh, experience. Our next uh, wellness webinar will be on uh, Wednesday, July 11th. Normally, we hold it the first Wednesday of every month, but since it's uh, the 4th of July week. We figured that people will have family events and things that they'll be going to. So we opted to change it to July 11th, same time, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We have uh, a lady by the name of Nina Venturella that will be joining us talking about oil change for your body, the lymphatic system. She, uh, we've worked with her recently and she has a great uh, expertise surrounding uh, the lymphatic system, drainage associated with the lymphatic system. Uh, she has a whole protocol that she's built out, and uh, it will be incredibly insightful. We're excited to have uh, Nina joining us next month for this. Uh, to wrap up, we just want to thank you. For, if you're here live, thank you for being here. We know it takes an hour out of your time, but we, we strive, and I know that the presenters like Dr. Bob strive to make sure that this is an incredibly valuable experience. We will be... Um, we have this obviously recorded. We will be distributing this out within the next week via email to all registrations. So if you missed you know, the first half, second half, somewhere in the middle, you'll be getting it all. It will be made available. And then, like I said, attached to that, Dr. Bob has mentioned that he'll have additional resources, um, some articles that he'll be sharing, as well as a chapter from his very own book. So we appreciate it uh, for being in attendance today. Thank you again, Dr. Bob. We appreciate it. And uh, take care. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.